I have no wants, I have no desires. Thank you for this life experience. This is the meditation that I have deep into a fast, and it may mean nothing to you in the beginning. So after like day 10, you start to become very in tune with these, these dry fasting elements, and you, you become irritable, <laughs> and then you go into deep autophagy, and then you go to a purified state, and then that's when you start really connecting with Mother Earth. And you can really find your own mantras, because people really shouldn't teach you a mantra. You should have your own mantra. My mantra that I learned from my higher self on day 19 of a dry fast is, I have no wants, I have no desires, thank you for this life experience. And it was like, do not forget this mantra. Don't forget that you have no wants and you have no desires, because this entire journey, this entire detoxification journey, right now, if you're listening to this, this is the most important thing, is discarding these dependencies. You have all these tabs open in your mind, and you have all these things that are circulating in the body that don't belong there, making you less of a truth vessel. But understand that it's removing dependencies. Even right now, I wanted to like take like something to play with while I talk because it's distracting. Like, oh, I need that. I need to do my meditation beforehand. I need to do these things. Like, you don't need to do anything. You know, you don't need anything at all. This is how people become very addicted to coffee. How people become very addicted to whatever supplement that they have. Like, I have to take my magnesium. Like, no, you're okay. Like, just eat eat the right food foods and just stop over. Um, being gluttonous you know it's and you start to being dependent on certain thought structures as well and then once you learn how to discard these things then really nothing can F with you you know so it's like you can go anywhere and at any time and, and not really care about any obligation you might have any distortion or like people convince you you need to live a certain way it's not true um, just do what makes it, it's the hardest thing to really overcome in this existence is just doing what the heck makes most sense to you and sticking to what makes most make what makes the most sense so i kind of wanted to start us off with saying disclaimer so people don't <laughs> just recklessly follow this advice they can seek supervision through me or any any other dry faster you find that's doing this professionally um, there's a couple others in mind so if you want to dm me i can give you those uh recommendations so i just want to say that i'm this is not medical advice if you want medical advice go seek your doctor i'm just somebody that has gone very deep into dry fasted states and i know what has what what is there for the taking i know how purify the body can get i know exactly what you can recover from and how to prep for these fasts and what you can do during the fast to make it more conducive to healing and also how you break the fast properly which is obviously super important as well um, honestly daily intake takes more discipline than actual fasting because right now i'm on day three and um you know it's it's anybody who's on day three right now and, and a lot of people who are fasting there, there's a group dry fast going on right now this is day three of it and we're all wrapping up tomorrow morning um at least i am um the thing is like you day three might seem like nothing but once you get to day four you know it's like this is an achievement like every day is super effective in dry fasting think about it you're doing no food and no water tremendous healing benefits are happening every single hour you know and especially when you get to day 10 it gets super exciting you're like oh cool like cool what 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 kind of detoxification miracles am i going to unleash into my life and you start seeing what's inhabiting your body you start seeing what what has been affecting you you know and they start getting very exacerbated i call it like a gnashing of the teeth uh, where it comes out and it has to show its it has to show its colors finally you know and you, you start rashing out and that's a good sign you know people like to stop stop during their their um, herxheimer reactions these detox symptoms because they're like mm, i can't do that i'm scared of this i have allergies like no like that you want that that's what well, that's the parasite leaving the body <laughs> and for anybody who knows me i mention the word parasite a lot because um, it's kind of like a, an umbrella term for anything that doesn't belong in the body. Of course, microbes can be a good thing. Of course, bacteria can be a good thing. But there's also unfavorable bacteria. And why not choose which ones you want? Um, so, yeah. So pretty much on day three, your insulin drops to all-time low. And you also have a replacement of, like, immune cells. Um, so the way I view, I view that is, like, your red blood cells are kind of... The ones that are kind of close to dying or dead finally get eaten by your body for energy and fuel but also the stronger survive the strongest red blood cells survives and the white blood cells survive so now only the strongest are actually um replicating each other okay so like you come back a stronger person and I, and I really do have a feeling that we're gonna 
like we're rebirthing this dry fasting detoxification, but in reality, this is super ancient information that we're kind of rebirthing, like I said. But I think the Egyptians understood this one concept where, you know, you want to, you want to like let your, you want to put yourself in a deprivation state so that your body becomes stronger afterwards. You take, you give yourself only little, only like a, a cloth of grape juice and you squeeze it and you take one or two drops and that's it. Now your body has to make do with that. Kind of like look at any tree, any plant you're taking care of. What's the one thing people commonly um, make their plants die? It's, it's actually overfeeding. It's overhydrating the, the plant, you know? And when, what happens when you don't overhydrate it? You know, you, can, you push the boundaries and what happens underneath the soil? The roots start growing more abundantly. They're reaching more so. So now what happens when you feed it? Now it's, it's gonna be able to launch off to become even more full and a bigger, wiser tree. And um, this kind of leads me into a good uh, transition because I wanted to say a quote. Um, I'm gonna say who the quote's from initially, and you're gonna have, some of you might know who, who actually said this, but it's, uh, as sheeps in the midst of wolves, be therefore wise as serpents and yet be as harmless as doves. As sheep in the midst of wolves, be therefore wise as serpents and yet be, in, be as harmless as doves. And why I think that's important is because you're transcending things when you detox. You're, 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 you're rising above certain imprints that you once subscribed to and your roots can grow farther. You know, so just like a child, you, you kind of teach a child that Santa Claus exists. You teach a child that all these illusions exist for their fantasy to like run wild. And they have to come across this information that is not really true when when they're ready to receive that, right? So like, so a child, you, you, you decide upon that, right? So you're becoming aware of this information and transcending it, and you're becoming as innocent as doves and as wise as serpents. You know, you're understanding darkness at the same time you elevate in light. You know, that's the whole game. Um, and that, that's what, when you hear someone talk, you can really tell if they have their ego in check. You can tell if they actually have true humility um, because there's just no urgency, there's no desperation, there's no want in, in their actions. They're not selling anything to you. Um, and, I, and I think the, the kind of transition that previous comment, which was like how you, you allow children to have um, this information when they're ready, but what makes, what makes you think that process hasn't, hasn't like stopped? What makes you think that we're not children and that maybe our creator is, re is waiting for us to be released information as well? Because maybe we are the naive children that aren't ready to overcome certain certain levels of darkness, you know? And that's why I like to kind of see my demons as angels is because because they hate being told thank you, you know? Like if, if, if you believe or you don't believe in demons, like the best way to really... Um, <laughs> depossess somebody who seems possessed is actually thanking them you know showing them love because now they can't polarize in fear because they want to get fear out of you like aha I look like I'm gonna be in rage and and hopefully you kind of match my anger that's, that's what happens when people start screaming at you with with whatever you do they want you to match the anger and therefore they can polarize off of your fear they're they're feeding themselves because they're currently in a, a dark state um, but if you see, uh, oh my gosh, there's, <laughs> there's a red cardinal outside the window, uh, and they are never here ever. Um, yeah, that's crazy. Um, my, my dad had red hair and every time I see a red cardinal, I think of him and he passed away like eight years ago. Um, and I always channel him when I'm beeping too fast, but that's very interesting. It's outside the window looking inside right now. Um, hmm. I kind of want to show you guys, but it's kind of tiptoeing away. Anyway. Um, so yeah, that's that. I can go on and on about that for forever. Um, so what, what I'm gonna do here with this live stream is I'm only gonna be on here for a little while. Um, it's a, we're 10 minutes in right now. And I'm going to pin any question people might have and answer it um, so that everyone can benefit off of this information. And of course, I'm not gonna use like medical lingo if I don't have that in my acumen. And I'm, I'm pretty much going to say based on my own personal experience of what I know to be true. If I don't know the answer to the question, I'm just gonna say I don't know, you know? Um, so yeah, it's good to see all you guys and, uh, <laughs> okay, so I'm going to turn the brightness up on my screen. Okay, so it's good to see all you guys. Okay, here we go. Oh, okay, so it skipped all the way to the end. Okay, so once again, I'm going to pin all the questions to the screen and people will see exactly what is asked. Um, okay, so here's, how do you deal with suffering? So etheric mystic says, how do you deal with suffering? suffering aspect of the physical discomfort like muscle cramping 
That's a great question, um, etheric mystic. I, the thing is, you once you oversupply your body with with potassium, you realize that you need you have less muscle cramping, you have less muscle aches. So two things need to happen. You need to kind of purify your blood through fasting. Um, you don't need to do that, but you can just supplement potassium rich foods. You can just supplement potassium, even synthetic potassium, even though I don't recommend that. But like you're going to see that your blood can reach all sorts of your body in a very uh, very um, quick amount of time. So you won't really feel the need for massages as much because you're not cramping. Women notoriously have way better menstruation cycles when they ha when they have an increase in minerals through things like black molasses and things like that have high mineral intake. Just high mineral rich foods, you know, celery, um, cucumber, pretty much raw foods. Any, any raw food has it. Um, so I deal with the, men the suffering aspect, the physical discomfort. Um, by stretching, I, I see stretching as kind of a way for my blood to reach certain extremities and staying relaxed. So say you're like in an unrelaxed um, state of mind, you're stressed, you're, you have too many tabs open in your mind, your heart is beating faster, and now your body's prioritizing that as the vital organ that needs the most assistance. So now you lose blood in your extremities, and now it's going towards your, your center, your core. And so therefore, like the red blood cells aren't able to replenish oxygen to other parts of your body, you know? So staying relaxed and getting the tabs closed out in your mind, things that you thought mattered, try to convince yourself that, that it doesn't matter, <laughs> just temporarily, you know, you can go back to it. Um, this is a good question though. Um, Devin Evans says, wondering, uh, wondering if you, did you ever get COVID? Fido, how was it? Did you, did your body do well with it? Yeah, I did get COVID actually. I got it a couple times. Um, and I even think I got it one time because of like a shedding because one friend of mine had it like, got like four different vaccine shots and I hung around, hung around them. And the, like a day and a half after that, I felt like the symptoms of COVID. I was like, great. I'm pretty sure that that his, his COVID vaccine like shed onto me or something. Um, but it was interesting. I was like, yes, I finally get to experience what everyone's talking about. I was excited to have COVID actually, because I get to see like, what does fasting do with this? And what what I found is this, is that I found that water fasting was better with it. Um, Cause I felt like it's something that's not gonna stay around in the body. So why not have the flushing mechanism? I started off with, with the dry fast, two days dry fast. And I, I could continue even with three days water and it was done. So it took like five days. But I can tell it was super resilient because my body is very, um, my body is very strong. I have a really strong immune system, and I feel like my body would overcome things very fast within the fast. And it took about five days. If if people have long COVID symptoms, I usually think that um, they need to go like you know it's like a nine day dry fast. Hopefully it's supervised, but nine days is how you get rid of long COVID. But you can also address it with like iodine intake, but also you can nebulize certain things like um, hydrogen peroxide at a low amount and iodine at a low amount. You can do this and it'll kind of uh, saturate these sinuses right here. That's where COVID likes to kind of um, uh, linger. And um, and that pretty much will will kind of kill it off and drag it through your sinuses and not your lymphatic system. So at least it can affect your sense of smell and sense of taste, because if you're nebulizing this, you'll be good to go. Fasting is also another pursuit. Queen, um, Queen Slagram says, how many days of dry fast are you doing this time? I'm gonna be doing just three days total. I, I like to fast alongside my clients and also followers that are doing a dry fast so that I'm able to, um, I'm able to kind of like, cause, I don't know, I feel like it's better when my teacher or an instructor does that work out with you, you know, cause you're like, you, you can identify with them more. They're not just standing there just shouting, shouting things at you. So this is me on, on, on day three of a dry fast. I'm very excited that it's day three, um, and I also like I always forget how how quickly it all goes by, but also how slowly it all goes by. It's like it's both. <laughs> um, so yeah, in a very short period of time, you can really overcome any illness really with dry fasting. You just kind of have to put in like like your mind's gonna kind of and your body's gonna throw all sorts of like obstacles at you, especially the parasites. So you have to transcend like all those things on the way to the finish line, um, and that. That's how you. That's how you kind of like become a higher awareness of mind, body, and spirit. I think, and you earn it. You know, it's it's hard. Dry fasting is freaking hard. Um, and anybody accomplishing it a day, th uh, three days in a dry fast, I applaud you. It's it's not easy. You know, even even like I've done many, many, many double digit dry fasts and three twenty day dry fasts, and still on day three I hate it. I hate day two and hate hate day three. When I get to day five, I'm like, okay, I am this new person. Okay, I am transitioning into a more purified state. I don't have the hunger anymore, which is one less thing to worry about. Um, okay, so yeah, 
And the next question is Don Dean Swan says, I like your <laughs> your long hairstyle. I've been I'm actually looking I was debating cutting it because I'm going to California, so I don't know what to do. Um, when I was doing a three-day dry fast, my body aches spinal down to butt and back of legs. Do you have any advice? So you had body aches during your um, on your oh on your spine, okay, and it was down to the butt and back of legs. So pretty much, um, so you know, dry fasting is the most anti-inflammatory thing you can do. So you're moving so much inflammation that your spine can start readjusting in in a, in a more natural form. If you're kind of Hanging on bars and rolling your back out with a foam roller during a dry fast are very effective because that's how you realign your spine. Um, that inflammation was kind of contorting, um, and so and so you can pinch nerves by the adjustment of this inflammation going out of the body and into the body. Okay, so understand that it's the most anti-inflammatory thing you can do, and using foam rollers and understanding that your back is now readjusting. So help it out, um, and it also can be. Um, two other things. One is like your body actually keeps its organic constituents, so it keep, keeps minerals, and it, and, it, and it discards things that are, that are inorganic. So like in your daily life, your body is trying to discard acidity at all times. Acidic states are how you get um, cancerous bodies. So during a dry fast, it's actually expedited, like very, very fast, um, where your body will start to, to discard acids. And this can really bundle in the back of the in the back near your butt area and also in your thighs that's where i've gotten acid buildup and to the point where i had to like stop fasting because it was just like preventing me from moving moving at all but also happy to finally urinate it out and also like hydrate and flush it out and then i was able to go way farther on the next dry fast without the acidic body that i was building through my certain diet intake at the time um, so that's my advice with that and i think there's one other thing i wanted to say and i forgot what it was oh yeah like yeah it's not relevant actually um, so yeah, uh, good to see some of you guys. I recognize a lot of your names. Um, <laughs> what's up, um, b -tay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so th there's always people who request to be in like the live stream, and I, I think that I'll do that with people who actually are dry fasting alongside this so they can tell the experience, but it'll be more of a guided fast. Um, so d Beg says, okay, so d Beg says, um, I done a, I've done a 72 hour dry fast, wanted to go longer, but I couldn't stop um, to think about water. Any tips um, to get your mind off of water during a fast? Yeah, I mean, for me, it's just kind of like, don't even put it in your, into your per periphery. You can't even put it on, because once your, your Instagram seems like it's just completely just throwing um, fruit and like food Instagram channels at you. So you wanna like kind of even get off Instagram if you're seeing too much of it, because your your saliva and your enzymes and your liver will will prepare itself for these foods if you're seeing it with your eyes. It's expecting you to, to actually take it. Um, so the less you think about it, so just kind of get your mind off it and breathe. So every time I think about hydration, I get really excited, right? It's super good, but like I think just, I, I breathe and I think about what my goals are in life and I think about what I want to accomplish with this fast and I think about just um, staying calm and um, just things that make me happy really um, or just meditating so you kind of want to just um, just just kind of like not think about it and you want to <laughs> I mean it's easier said than done but the thirst really doesn't go away especially if you have like unfavorable microbes in the body um, but that's pretty much it it's just something that you get better at the more you fast because that's really what this whole thing is. It's like fine tuning your psychology, um, your, your psyche with, with how to deal with all sorts of things um, within, within life outside of fasting as well. Because um, that, that was another good quote I read actually, which was something to do with like, you know how far you have come spiritually when, you, when, some, when you're tested with uh, certain consequences in life. Because then you can really see, like, are you reacting in an angry way or are you reacting in a, in a humble manner? Like, do you care about this enough to really kind of, like, throw energy at it? Or are you going you're gonna to harness your energy and just keep it moving, you know? Um, so sometimes people can really irritate you with political, spiritual thoughts. And do you really need to partake? You don't have to partake in that conversation. You can just let them go along their way and just, you know, be the wise person. You know, they, we live in eternity, so they have all the time in the world to figure this out. You know, you don't have to solve the problem right away. Like Plato said, you can't teach a man, but you can make him think. You can't teach a man, but you can make him think. What is your favorite way to break three-day dry fast? <laughs> so three-day dry fasts are really um, awesome because it's, it's not that long, you know. So it's not that long so that you can break it with whatever you want, really. 
Um, but if you want to get, if you want to treat your body gently and have the max benefits, I usually break it with. Um, so anything longer than a three-day dry fast, I, I kind of it kind of goes in um, regard to like water first, then juices, then vegetable broth, then juices, and then fruits, you know. But with three-day dry fast, you can just break on juices. I like to do coconut water and lemon because you're getting all those minerals from the coconut water. It's really um, kind of, it mimics your blood plasma, so your body really recognizes it. So you're seeing it as true hydration. And I put, I spike it with lemon, so I'm getting that lemon, the lymphatic, um, it's cutting my lymph, the stagnant lymph that my body was breaking through during the dry fast. So now it's really clean. You're gonna feel super clean if you have coconut water and just go heavy on the lemon. Um, you can spike it with aloe water too. I do that sometimes. Um, so that's pretty much it. Um, so I like to do that and I'll kind of like, um, so I made some juices right to this fast too. I, I made um, pineapple juice with, uh, with lemon and I made it with apples and ginger and yeah, that's it. And a little bit of aloe. Um, I can't wait to have that because obviously pineapple is freakishly um, abundant in enzymes. It's it's like out of control. Can you talk about the prep for... Um, so this person, hashtag my Beth, hashtag my Beth, says, can you talk about the how to prep for an end to dry fast? Um, yeah. Um, you you pretty much can find this information. I'm not gonna waste people's time because it's I, this is all I really talk about. <laughs> so you just pretty much want to just go in my highlights on my Instagram profile and look at three day fast and you'll see exactly how I prep and how I, I I'm gonna put a post about how I end long dry fasts and I think that's very important. You simply just wanna stay away from high glycemic fluids and also salty fluids. You obviously wanna break on fluids and you don't wanna, inst you don't wanna over instigate your pancreas and you also don't want to have a, a big salt intake because you'll retain too much water and your your legs in particular will become very swollen um, okay so this is okay so this person says uh, the best electrolyte rich foods I pretty much just uh, raw foods have elect electricity to it if you cook it you're diminishing the, the electricity but obviously cooked food you can have more density to the body so if you're trying to build the body and get muscles cooked food and proteins can be great up to a certain extent so it's a balance so raw foods, I like coconut water once again, and I like all fruit juices. Um, these are electrolyte rich. Um, and I also like Mountain Valley spring water, as if you just want water and no, having no calories at all, because I find that this is actually really important to know is um, a lot of juicers can get very bloated because they're, if they're not getting enough protein, their body will hold up those juices inside their, their intestines and it'll, they'll get bloated because their body's trying to rummage through it for glycogen and protein. And so it doesn't really release it until all of it has been saturated into your, into your um, intestines. Um, so that's just my theory on it. <laughs> that's not a scientific fact, but like that makes a lot of sense though, right? Um, did you ever get get COVID? Okay, so I did answer the question already. Can injuries like torn ligaments and tendons, in, um, uh, for example, like a torn meniscus within the knee heal through dry fasting? So like that, that takes time. And I think that pulsing fasting is a really good idea with that because you're gonna um, accelerate the, this because you're, if. Think about this, like people go to Mexico and certain countries to get very cheap deals on stem cells. So you can get, you can not fast at all and just get stem cells like just injected into your, your ligaments and your joints. And that notoriously helps people heal a lot faster. But what is the, one of the scientific benefits of fasting? It's actually taking stem cells from your body naturally and utilizing that naturally. So yes, I would pulse it. I would do like these, I would do like one or two. Um, I would do like, I would do one five day dry fast, like, probably every two months. And um, that would kind of pull out the stem cells needed for those ligaments to heal properly. I certainly was able to heal my leg, uh, my my foot torn ligaments on, a, on my 20 day dry fast. And it took a while. I thought that was never gonna heal actually. Um, but yeah, it did. So Anna Eats Fruits says, um, when fasting, I always have trouble sleeping. I'm awake for most of the night. That part is the hardest. How do you help with deal with insomnia? <laughs> it is really difficult because obviously it's like a um, fasting is like a hormetic um, activity. So you're you're kind of horm hormetic means like you're going you're inducing a stressor so that your body can benefit from it, just like exercise. But also like so you're you're having these hormones be pumped through the body, and when you sleep, when you're trying to sleep, you, your body can be saying like, hey, we haven't accepted this this fasted state yet. So we want you to get up and find some freaking food <laughs> and some water. Um, and so you're kind of pumping cortisol. So it's good to kind of like, you just kind of get, have to get through that first part, you know, and it does get better. And sometimes, because my sleep was actually stunted last night, I was laying in bed and I was like, now I can relate to what people say. Um, 
and you getting cold, cold breeze on you and breathing through your nose is the best. Open window, cold, cold air on you and nose breathing. That's the best way to do it. And maybe play some like really chill frequency music. Um, I'll probably put on my, uh, my link, my link tree and my profile. I want to put like my Spotify playlist because I have it for like when I go deep into a fast and I need like any extra help I can get. And it has some really chill things to make time pass by and you to kind of be distracted a little bit. Um, yo, Trev, I have the same man, your hairstyle is <laughs> divine bliss says my hairstyle is good. Um, yeah, like honestly, I'm definitely getting less looks with this, with this hairstyle I can tell, but, uh, yeah, it is what it is. It's I, like, I just don't, I don't give a crap. You know, this hairstyle is pretty much my way of saying I don't give a shit. I'm just going to like grow it out and see what happens. I might enjoy this. I kind of like dealing with it at, at the time being, but it is freaking out some people that know me with short hair for the past 10 years. Um, but I kind of see it. This this hairstyle is is is, um, is actually um, for a reason. It's not just for like style or to look pretty. It's it's because I'm planning on going on a 25 day dry fast, and like there's a reason Jesus had had, had really long hair. It's he, I think he understood that you can pull minerals from your hair because obviously the more mineral abundant the body is, um, things like zinc and other minerals, they can make your nails grow very fast and they make your hair grow really fast. So my nails, I'm constantly cutting them because they grow so fast. I'm in a mineral surplus state at all times. Um, so my hair and my nails and my skin are benefiting. Um, yeah, so this person says, Prayer with Jordan says, um, not a question, mate, could you talk could talk with you for days? Just wanted to say, I think you're amazing. <laughs> Been watching a few ages. Uh, that's the thing about these live streams. There's like nothing but angels in here like you had other people's live streams and it's kind of like it's just people like talking negatively and trolling and stuff like that but like here i think if you talk with authenticity i think you have the better ability of making your account really thrive you know and authenticity is the name of the game because people can benefit off of it and they can use it we don't live here forever so why not be authentic and help others um would love to do some cool collabs with you in the future definitely um, water is key, bro. Key lime juice. Yeah, key lime juice is great. Plant master, what's up, brah? Um, he also did a recent, I think, 10 day dry fast, like a boss. Um, that's no easy feat. And it's hard to really see past these obstacles. Like day three, people are like, how the hell can you fast past three days? But it gets it gets easier. You go in waves. It's a roller coaster. And you'll cry, you'll laugh, you'll, <laughs> you'll feel like euphoria. Um, and you also feel tired, you'll feel energetic, you'll want to reach out to all people, all people in your life. And you'll kind of discard all these dependencies that you thought you 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 kind of that you thought were important before. Because right now I'm kind of like getting into my lighter being because it's day three, but I'm still dense. So whenever I'm on day three of a live stream, I like my energy the best. Um, but after that, it's kind of not really. Okay. I I like day three the best energy, and I also like day eleven. So those are the best live stream days. Um, hey man, been watching you for a while. Awesome. Um, good to see you, brother. P man four one three. Jane the guide uh, says I'm doing a three day dry fast. Stoked to break it. Okay. Um, stoked to break it with water, juice, and nettle tea. Any other suggestions? Yeah, nettle tea is no joke. That is, if there, if you want one herb that actually does something for sure, nettle tea definitely does stuff. Um, it'll really. So pretty much what dry fasting and like all these oxidative therapies do is they kind of allow things that are hiding from the immune system to kind of get out of hiding and then your immune system, immune, immune system can address it again. Okay, so nettle tea is really good for this. So if you're planning on getting into a dry fast, it's definitely a good idea to do some nettle tea in the mornings to kind of instigate, ruffle up the feathers of these parasites that might be hiding. So you're kind of going at it aggressively. Like um, that's why I like pineapple juice and nettle tea and iodine. Those three things are really, really freaking good before a fast to kind of um, uh, accelerate healing. But you're kind of saying like, hey, I'm ready to take this on, like who wants to go to war? That's pretty much what you're doing. Um, any ideas on cotton mouth? Yeah, definitely just start nose breathing uh, more often. And, um, and you're gonna find that you're gonna hydrate a little bit better. So yeah, try not to talk as much as you can. Don't do any live streams. And um, pretty much just, uh, just nose breathe. Get outside near the beach and like nose breathe near the beach, near bodies of water. That's the key. If you want to go fast and, and fast, if you want to go far and fast, go near bodies of water and you're getting that clean humidity, especially that clean air. That's the reason why people would live on ocean coasts because you're getting clean filtered air. The ocean is hooking you up. But if you're mainland, you're not getting that, that iodine rich <laughs> air. So um, yeah, good to see you. Limited trees genics. Uh, just a bunch of love in this. Uh, people are happy on a Wednesday. I think that they see that um, 
<laughs> and the weekend is almost here. Um, that's why I like doing these like on the weekdays because like people um, are kind of settling in for the evening or the morning and they have time to, to learn more about detoxification. Um, this person says, Scoobed5282 says, can you dry fasting heal and large prostate? Yeah. So I recently had a client that was on stage five of um, prostate cancer and they were very conservative and like wanted, definitely wanted to go towards a more medical approach. Um, but the prostate is pretty much what I, I recommended the things that I've already said before is like the, the every single morning do pineapple juice that the enzymes will kind of help with the urination. Um, because the, the prostate inhibits people from having it, like a, a good urination flow. Also, the iodine in the morning can actually dissolve any parasites. If it's parasites bundling up in the prostate and it's not calcification, that could be another thing. So the, the pineapple and the iodine, amping up the iodine um, to a healthy level. And then obviously doing dry fasting. Dry fasting blatantly will work. You can see prostate as a gland, you know, so all glands can get inflamed if there's a heavy parasitic infection. And what happens when you dry fast long enough or water fast, these glands de-squell. So there's no reason to get surgery on like a gland. There's no reason because if dry fasting can heal it, if fasting can heal it, what are you doing? You know, these are like little garbage container stations that are kind of like all over your body until your lymphatic system is ready for another release. Okay, and your lymphatic system is releasing it. Lymph nodes are not a bad thing. It's crazy how people, like the medical industry can really teach you that they are, and you get it surgically removed. Like I had inflamed lymph nodes all over my body um, and dry fasting blatantly worked. My first dry fast, I, lied, I pretty much did a lot of posts and it was like, I had like 200 followers and I pretty much was saying like day, day 12 is when um, you can feel that the, uh, the lymph nodes are completely just gone. Um, like they're completely, they're flowing now, everything's good. So um, Lawrence J says, what's the best way to pull out and use stem cells urine therapy? So yeah, like urine therapy can be, um, urine therapy can be, can be very productive if, you, if you're collecting urine from day two to day five. After, after like day nine, you, you might be starting to like um, taking moisture from the muscle tissue. So it's not really as, um, conductive with stem cells. I think stem cells are the best from day two to day five. So store those. If you're if you're uh, into shivambu, like that's the best time to collect it. Um, so yeah, you, it's it's pretty much uh, the best way to pull out and use stem cells is is either a using the placenta from your wife that has recently given birth. And make sure that they store it and they they give it to you because that's obviously a very <laughs> expensive item these days, as you know. And urine and urine actually has very a lot of stem cells. So your, your perspiration, your sweat is actually identical to your, your urine. So your body's already circulating stem cells as much as it can um, when, it, when it can. So your bones are more than just your bones. Like your bones are just an abundance of mineral composition. And also your body pulls stem cells from the bones when your body is deficient in certain things. Okay, so if, it's, if stem cells are needed and your body finds things to fix, especially in a fasted state, this is why fasting is so freaking amazing because your body knows to do these things. It'll pull stem cells from your bones, like as little storage facilities that your body has always had access to. So think about that. Think about that. Like this, the, think about that. Like, that's why this whole thing is really cool. This is why I have an account that's fasting with Trevor because there's so many different mechanisms that, that the body is capable of doing and I just want people to learn them so they can tap into it. And so when you can you can use your body and and um and really pull on the best attributes that it is able to give you, especially during healing states. It's just mentally hard to do the fasts. Um, but if you're a mentally strong person, you have it there ready and waiting for you. Just challenge it. Um, okay, so all orthodox priests men have long hair and beards like Christ. Yeah, that's true. Um, I'm gonna try to plow through this a little faster because I feel like uh, because I feel like people are um, just. I'm probably at 10 minutes lagged with the questions. Trevor, could you please share about your experiences um, with enemas? Do you clear out your colon so clean that clear water comes out? Yes, this is what I usually always say. I do enough enemas before I dry fast to get a clean water coming out of my, my body so that I know there's no more excrement in, in, the, uh, in the intestines. So therefore, I'm able to kind of be in a very clear-minded state. I'm able to not, my body doesn't have to focus on like residual uh, food buildup and also toxic waste matter that can actually ferment and it'll out it'll turn into an alcohol substance and make your fasting really just not a pleasurable experience so yeah definitely prioritize enema cleansing so if people tell you like i can fast without doing enemas like they just don't know what they're talking about and i can i can attest to that for sure what's up he man from massachusetts 
Good, I can think, I think we're flowing now. So do you think dry fasting is more beneficial after a few weeks of liquids? Definitely, I definitely um, uh, re recommend people hydrate as much as possible. Stack the cards in your favor so your body can at least start from a, from a surplus state. Start from mineral surplus state, start from a hydration surplus state, and then watch your body um, flow with the healing as you go deeper. What brand and dosage of iodine do you recommend? I, I recommend doing Lugol's iodine as the most reputable brand. Um, but if you feel like you can trust a certain local source, I would go for it. I'm, 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 I'm about to start making my own iodine and, and, um, and releasing that to people so they don't have to pay as much. Um, and it's from a trustworthy source. So I kind of, I sometimes supplement up to or upwards of like 80 milligrams a morning. Sometimes that I take days off, you can pulse with it. It's healthy as the pulse. And selenium is a good cofactor with it as well. So it's an oxidative therapy, just like um, just like dry fasting is. But make sure you have antioxidants. So oxidants make you age because you're dehydrated and you're 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 pretty much drying out the things that don't belong there. And then antioxidants obviously make you hydrated, just like that's why they're so abundant in fruits and, and um, raw foods. So energy coming from you is really powerful yet calm and soothing. Thank you for your words. Awesome. Good to see you, Dean Swan. Anna eats fruit. Can you try and heal acne scarring? Yeah, it can. It can. It, you need to go um, a little bit deeper to do that, though. I'm thinking that so acne scarring and acne in general will will go away if you go um, will go a little bit farther. Um, yeah. So hopefully, okay. So divine bliss. Um, yeah, I think I answered those questions on sleep already. So. People be going Mexico. Okay, yeah, cool. So we're catching up. So Sean Meager says, "What if I have placenta from my own birth 24 years ago?" Um, I'm not sure about the the expiration of stem cells, but if they refrigerate it and they keep it, um, just you know, so it's it's still fresh, I guess, and ready, then I think that you should be you good to go. I'm not sure if there's an expiration on stem cells. I really don't. Um, so that's a good question. Any update on the book? Um, the book is written. <laughs> the book is written. That's why I wrote a book on like my exact uh, journey in dry fasting. So it's like, disclosing my tongue, it's disclosing my eyes, and my the rashes I was dealing with in my body and how I overcame them. So it's very detailed, and it discloses the blood test to prove that I overcame things. So it's just like very scientific. It's no spiritual stuff at all. It's just going right to the the truth of the matter. Um, so I I just need to release it. I just kind of wanted to do like. Because I keep I keep uncovering more and more information with these deeper fasts, so it's kind of like a heat postponing the release of this book, and um, and I'm gonna release it. I'm not sure when though. We'll see. Um, it's probably gonna be middle this year, maybe hopefully third quarter at, at the very latest. Um, yep, awesome. Good to see you. Divine bliss is very active. <laughs> um, how is your how is your experience with raw eating or raw cooked ML products? Do you try to avoid them or so? Okay, so this person is what really matters, what really is. They said, how is your experience with raw eating raw or cooked animal products? Do you try to avoid them or do you think that it is a good source of buildup after a dry fast or not? Not directly after a dry fast because it's very dense and it's obviously the most fibrous food you can really eat is meat. So it's kind of like, it's, that's why these carnivore people really like it because it's kind of pushing through the jet traffic jam. But if you cook it too much, you, you kind of cook out the beneficial properties of meat. Um, you're also taking on the on the not so beneficial hormones of the animal during the suffering process of the death, um, and also like you're essentially kind of drinking the blood of the animal too. And as a matter of fact, a lot of humans are drinking the blood, so that's how you're getting like an abundance of that hormone that the ha animal had, and it can be unfavorable for you. Um, for me, it was I would get like a lack of confidence and security nerves. I would have more so with animal products, um, but obviously meat has a very good. Um, amino acid profile so that you can build muscle tissues really easily on foods that move slowly in the body you know like oats and meats these things move slowly so your body can you're not what you eat you what you don't shit out pretty much so like you don't you're not shitting out meats that easily you can't even like chew it to a juice there's still a pulp and people swallow the pulp so what's happening with that you know um so it's um yeah i think it, it it's all based on what you there's no right or wrong you can choose whatever diet you want um, but I would, if you're going to go back to meats, I would choose a little bit later after you break the fast. Um, okay, cool. So I think I've gotten through, uh, yes, I've, I've gotten through all the questions for these people. So I'm going to go to the questions in this other thing. And I think we can wrap it up in just like um, 45 minutes. So we're, we, we're 40 minutes in so far, and we're going to do five more minutes. Um, if I get any more questions, I'll stay on a little longer. But I, I like the energy that has already transpired on this so far. So, um, so maybe I'll just post it. So there's um, the question here from Renee. Um, 
Renee Lori Chiella says, when you're eating, what does your diet look like? Do you eat animal products? Um, I used to eat like animal products. If I got like very, um, if I'm very vain, I'll go towards like muscle building. If I'm very enlightened, I'll go towards just pretty much fruit based diets, you know? So like it's, there's two ends of the spectrum. Meat will give you like an amino acid profile that makes you build and it'll also make you um, build more muscle tissue faster. And um, a lot of people see it as like a necessary food. It's, it's obviously not necessary if people that are on the opposite diets can live longer lifetimes. So like if someone is just eating meat, I think that you can be more subjected to the hormonal disposition. Also um, possible parasitic um, forms that can give you colitis, especially on raw meats. And um, that's why I kind of like want to stay away from raw meats if I'm going to have meats. And I pretty much have an abundance of lentils. Um, I have hummus. I also eat like a lot of avocados and these are like the denser foods. And um, I pretty much will have like uh, a lot of cucumbers. So I'll make like these wraps with them, I'll make salads. And then I also will have like an abundance of fruits before and after that, you know, so just fruits, fruits, fruits all day long. So my, body, my, my diet is pretty much like 80% fruits and then 20% like as protein rich vegan foods as I possibly can find. Um, but I, I don't really hate on anybody that goes back to meat and, and tries it out for a bit. I just think it can be more inflammatory um, if you're eating certain kinds. Um, so Free Your Mind Beautiful says, um, do you recommend colonics? Uh, so colonics I think is going to a professional practitioner and they are performing the colonic on you. So I think that I, I prefer more so enemas that you're, con you're conducting yourself and you can get the own, your own mixture. You're saving a lot more money doing that and you are also able to flush the intestines according to what, according to your, your um, pleasing. So I do about four or five enemas, like there's no questions asked, like I definitely do four or five every single time I do a fast because one is just not enough, it just kind of gets the colon hydrated. Think about that, when you do an enema, you have to get it hydrated first. Leave the mixture in your, in your body as much as you can, and it really helps to, if you have plaque, just to kind of like massage your intestines, like pretty deeply, and you're kind of helping out that process. Like, you can feel the water moving around when you're full of water, and then you release it, go in for another time, and then and you do it like four or five times um, until you're ready. So obviously it's good to do ozonated magnesium the night before because it liquefies everything, and now you're more, um, these enemas are more productive. Um, so, okay, so I have one more here, I think. Okay, so are you, okay, I already answered that. Okay, when is your, when is your um, Guatemala fast? Hoping to, I've been thinking about this today. So I'm doing a, a, um, a retreat in Guatemala and I'm gonna be doing that at the end of this year, December or January. Obviously it's gonna be completely badass. Like I don't really F around. Like I make sure my accommodations and people's experiences are like as positive and as beneficial as they possibly can be. So it's gonna be in like a paradise area on this really spiritual lake and it's gonna be like all this high vibe people that I've met in my life, just several of them. And I'm going to make sure that they are all there to kind of like flow around, not like distract anybody from their own process. I'll be having a professional yoga practitioner and I'll be speaking after that in a very chill form to kind of help people relax and um, and just kind of go through meditations and kind of flow into the state and do the stretches that I usually do. It's all just really easy yoga sessions, nothing arduous at all. And then I'm gonna have like my favorite flutist in the entire world, he's actually 100% Native American. He'll just be walking around. We're giving like him a room. I'm like, hey, just walk around and do your thing and kind of play certain notes as you see fit. And he, his music is amazing. I actually tapped into him during like one of my longer fasts and it really got me through some arduous states and dry fasts. Um, so that's so that's pretty much some details on the on the Guatemalan retreat coming up. So um, I'm probably gonna do just two more questions, and then I'm gonna probably gonna wrap it up. Just like literally two more questions, um, and yeah, and so pretty much I think there was one other question I saw here. Um, okay, have you ever met or talked to? Okay, so this person says I live in Skyrise Building, 20 stories up. If that's bad air quality for dry fasting, um, it kind of is. It's very you're over dehydrating yourself. Um, and you are kind of like, it's just a very dry um, area, especially air conditioning takes the moisture out of the air. So you're not, it's not really conducive to dry fasting that well. Um, and Queen Instagram says, so you pretty much wanna like go towards a body of water, like I said, like oceans or lakes, those are more con conducive to dry fasted states. Um, Queen Instagram, and it's the last um, question. If anybody has like a really cool question after that, I'll go into it, but um, this seems like the last one. Um, have you ever met or talked to Dr. Filinov? Um, yeah, I, I've, 
I've, I haven't talked to him um, and I don't want to like shame his practice at all but we definitely have different ideas of how um, to navigate a dry fast I mean I've gone 20 days I'm not sure how long he's gone I'm not trying to compete with him at all but I kind of like a doctor that is more um, hands-on and has gone through the experience themselves um, but he definitely has an abundance of information and it's a great starting point for dry fasting um, okay and um, so pretty much okay so <laughs> okay I get some more okay the flutist name um, just DM me I kind of I'm kind of uh, I'm kind of having a I'm trying to think his name is I forget his name um, but just DM me and I'll send you the flutist name and the last and final question is okay yeah so okay um, oh, here it is last and final question so this is it um, and then I'm not gonna be doing live streams for a long time after this because this is like a, I do like these three-day group dry fast like once every season once every quarter maybe I've been doing it once every month but I kind of want to like take a break off Instagram so this is uh, gonna be my last live stream for a while but hopefully people benefited off of this um, information so far I think it was a good live stream and I will be posting this um, and so the last final question is I want to do a consult if if one is on the other side of the planet can you tee up a time that's not so late yeah um, do you kind of consult people internationally pretty much majority of my consults are international consults um, and so so pretty much I uh, I, I th we just kind of make do either they do it at three o'clock in the morning or they DM me they're like hey open up a slot and I'll open up a slot so just kind of tell me exactly when you want the consult and then I will open up that slot and then like close it as soon as you book it because I'd rather be in a state in my mornings which I'm, I'm most productive with with uh, information anyway so hopefully people who are dry fasting right now have benefited off of this um, off of this uh, live stream and you guys are badasses honestly like if you gone three days in a dry fast that is no like easy feat like that's very hard to do and just know that um now you begin you created a foundation this is like a much bigger foundation you might think doing a three-day dry fast because now you know you can push yourself to this level um and you can go rise above and go five days you go up the steps of the ladder and take the health into your own hands you became your own doctor this is you did the most detoxifying thing you can possibly do the internet says you die after three days dry fast this is just not true um that sounded like a rhyme but anyway i will leave it on that note and um, I love you guys and don't hesitate to reach out and um, just sending you positive vibes and much love your way anyway have a great night or day wherever you are in the world